Now, the reason the weight changes based on latitude is the distance and the angular speed compared to the equator. Now, the closer you are to the equator, the less things weigh. Sorry, what's the, the equator? You are I'm to sorry, the poles, just sorry, just to interrupt. I'm really sorry, Bob. Because I just need to get location. some clarity on terms. You're interrupting I'm sorry, me, yeah, because I need to understand something you've said. What's the equator exactly? Now here Mr. Oakley is employing his technique of interrupt and disrupt. He asked me a question, I began to answer it, and then he stops me midway through the answer to ask me an inane definition of something that is commonly known by any middle school child in the world. This is Bob the Science Guy. Welcome to part two of the Nathan Oakley Dumpster Fire. Cue the music. Sorry, what do it you mean? It is the largest midline? diameter of the Earth, north to south, and it's a measured, it's a measured quantity, so it's not really in question. It measured. How it did is. they measure it? Uh, they surveyed it. They so surveyed they, the degree of latitude on the equator. How did they get it? They didn't survey it. They derived it. Do you not know how they got the measurement no, of the equator? they surveyed a degree. A degree of what? A degree of longitude on the equator. Sorry, longitude is automatically assuming... Century. Sorry, you're automatically assuming that the equator is the outside edge of a sphere. Actually, of course, the equator is the line of latitude that is given the designation zero, and it is midway between the two poles. It is the longest line of latitude, and a degree was indeed surveyed in the late 18th century. Oh, okay. You are automatically assuming that the equator is the outside edge of a sphere. How, how am I doing that? I'm saying it's a measured line. It's not a measured line. It's derived from the path of the sun. So, oh, no, wow. it's not a measured line. Oh, it's derived from the pattern of the sun. How's it derived from the pattern of the sun, Nathan? Explain derived this from I'm the path it. of the sun. Not a measured line. The equator's not a line. It's a concept. It's not a line that's measured, you stupid Burke. It's a line of latitude. A, a lati so they've latitude. already got this latitude. A latitude's also a concept, not a place you can go to. A concept. Oh, really? Yeah, a I concept. I can't define your location on latitude. Do you want to show me a picture of a latitude line on Earth? Do you want to show me that? Well, Nathan, this sign is on I-75 just south of Gaylord, Michigan. It is the 45th parallel. It is the line that is halfway between the equator and the North Pole. Now the North Pole, the equator, and the 45th parallel for that matter, is part of a worldwide grid coordinate system. This grid coordinate system is how we determine our location on Earth. On the land, these lines are surveyed because every piece of property is described in relationship to this coordinate system. This is the same coordinate system that GPS uses to locate our position within six feet anywhere in the world. It's on maps, you said. Oh, so it's not in reality then. It's a concept on a map, precisely like I've just pointed out then. So you're talking about going to concepts. I can point you out exactly where it is. There's on a map. A sign that says the on a map. That's not on a measured mile. line. Nathan, your argument is that the... It, lines of latitude are something that are painted on the earth. That's no, that's the opposite of what I'm saying. You're saying it's a measured line, and I'm saying no, there is no line. Okay, so let's unpack Nathan's argument here. Does anybody else have the impression, as I do, that Nathan is insisting that the lines of latitude and longitude must be physical features on the earth in order to be real? I've shown a sign marking the 45th latitude. We certainly don't have a four inch wide blue line going down the equator. Does that mean that these lines do not exist? I would argue that that does not mean the lines do not exist. It is very clearly a coordinate system that can and is marked on the earth on a regular basis as part of surveys. Now, mind you, this tirade was started when I simply mentioned latitude and longitude. Nathan's been going on for quite a bit of time berating me over how these are imaginary and they don't exist, and they're done by sun angles and 15,000 other things. Yet he refuses to acknowledge the fact that there is indeed a grid coordinate system. A surveyed grid coordinate system that has markers 
that has signs, that has property lines, that has boundaries between states and provinces. The long northern border of the United States, in fact, is along a line of latitude between the United States and Canada. Nathan, are you under the impression that that line is not real or marked? Well, let's go find out if it is a real line, Nathan. Why don't you take an airplane and go on over to Canada and then cross that line into the United States without checking in with Border Patrol? I bet you that you're going to find out very quickly that line is very real. All right, so you don't understand the concept. That oh, so it is a concept then, like I've just pointed out. I don't understand the concept when I am quite specifically pointing out that this is a concept and not a line that you can go and measure. Poor, poor Nathan. Just listen to him go on. This is almost painful. Now, if you managed to unpack that a little bit, you would have heard that I was mentioning lines of longitude and latitude, but Nathan just couldn't help himself. He had to scream over me. Because I think he knows that this is how this works, but he doesn't want to hear it. Now, despite the fact that he is exhibiting the behavior and the insight of an elementary school student having a tantrum, his followers will view him as a hero for taking down the great Bob the Science Guy. No, How there adore. is no lines of latitude on the earth, you circle-jerking asshole. All right. I'm taking some notes here. Nathan Oakley thinks that lines of latitude have to be painted on the earth. No, that's not what I said. You said they'd measured a line on earth. That was what you claimed. Now you're strawmanning me and misrepresenting what I've actually said. Another cheap trick. No, okay, I have not claimed that latitude lines are painted on earth. You declared it was a measured line. It's not. It is it's a, a concept line. that you keep talking over every time I point it out. Nathan, you simpleton. Oh. You know, this is almost painful. How many people out there think that a grown man like Nathan Oakley doesn't understand the very basic concepts of latitude and longitude that are on every map he's ever seen in his life? Do you think that he really believes this nonsense? Do you think he honestly believes the Earth is flat despite all of the evidence, the photos from space, the surveys, the photographs? Do you think that he's doing this just for money? Do you think he's doing it because it makes him feel important in an otherwise meaningless life? Do you think he enjoys the power of having people on his show so he can berate and scream and swear at them and act like he's a big deal to somebody and have the adoration of gullible people that don't know any better? I don't know. Why don't you put some comments in and see what you guys think? Well, as much as I hate it, let's go back to the silliness. Can we get an agreement on the equator first, please? Oh, yeah. So Let's get an agreement. Does everybody, does everybody agree that it's okay to presuppose that the equator is the outside edge of a presupposed sphere? Is everybody cool uh, with that? No. I have another. No, if you, I'm not if, okay with that. If you aren't okay with that, I have another. Uh, we haven't got an agreement um, from the panel yet, Cinder, so let's just get a consensus. Is everybody on the panel cool with us presupposing that the sun traverses the outside edge of a sphere? Is everyone cool with that? No. Absolutely no. not. <laughs> I am cool no. with it, however, no, that no, it has been observed no. to be at a maximum at the equator, the apparent equator line on the Earth, whatever, however it may interconnect. I don't really know for sure if it's like a, a circle or a straight line or anything. Don't have any perfect confirmation of that, but it, we can definitely conclude that it has been deduced from the celestial uh, I, positions. In but well, we, we can agree that it, it seems to form a line or a circle at the equator, right? Because... Um, we, we can see that at the equator there, the day and night is almost the same, and it is only happening at a certain um, width and a certain length that you can measure, or you can look at the shadows at um, at 12 o'clock, and uh, you can see that the shadows appear um, to go at 90 degrees down oh of the... Oh, God, as Zinder babbles his way through this bollocks. Okay, Nathan, so there you have it. Even your panel gets the idea of what the equator is. 
They all described it. Not one of them mentioned anything about it being on a globe. So this is again another wild goose taste that you're doing just to berate people. As your own echo chamber panel of your little followers just pointed out, there are many ways to describe the equator very precisely without making mention of the fact that the Earth is a sphere or a planet or rotates or has gravity. The fact that you simply use the mention of the equator as an excuse to go off into a 20-minute tirade really has no basis in reality. Then again, most of your stuff doesn't. Okay. Fit you your, do that too. Narrative. You say, okay, when I absolutely demolish your religious faith based on a presupposition of an R value derived from the sun's path. So yeah, it's not okay. What does the R value have to do with the sun's path, Nathan? Explain that to me. That's how they derived it. They got the circumference of the sun's... Really? Yeah, that's how they, they derived didn't have it. anything to do with the sun's path. Yeah, right. they derived it from it. That's how they got the how circumference of a presupposed sphere. By oh, I'm just going to get talked over the entire time, am I? So, yeah, they... I'm asking you a question. Yeah, they derived it from the path of the sun and presupposed it's going around the how outside edge. Oh, I got halfway through a sentence and Bob the wanker guy is talking again. Answer the question, Nathan. Yeah, I was how in the middle of answering it and you talked secure. over me. Yeah, you presuppose it's traversing the outside edge of a sphere, giving you a circumference of a sphere. Hello? He's done now. Am I allowed to talk yet? Yes. No shit, there was a great big gap and I shouted hello at you. What do you think? I don't know what to think because every time I start to talk, you start talking over me, Nathan. No, that would be projection. That's what you're doing to me. I get halfway through a sentence, then you talk over me. So let's have less of the projection because that's what you're doing. This does get quite frustrating. You know, you try and present something and he cannot let you get three words out without opening his mouth. He just, he can't stand it. He's got to be the one talking on the uh, presentation. Even if it's the other person's turn to present something, he's got to talk over it. How on earth do you have a conversation if people don't show each other the common courtesy of letting them get a full sentence out of their mouths? It's just very childish of you, Nathan. But don't worry. I won't be slapping you or anything like that. Who would slap a child? Now, was R only computed based on one test by, by uh, Eratosthenes? No, it's assumed originally by Aristarchus watching no. shadows go over lights in the sky. Aristarchus is a different one. Do you know he the assumed difference between R. Aristosthenes and Aristarchus? Yeah. What did Aristarchus do? Sorry, I just said he presupposed R. What did Aristarchus do? Watched a light go across and have a shadow traveling across it. That's Eratosthenes. That's Aristarchus. Aristarchus. Is the one that determined the distance to the That's sun Aristarchus. By That's what Aristarchus the did. That's what Aristarchus did. Straight, That's what Aristarchus did. All right. Okay, so here's another characteristic that Nathan Oakley has. He's clearly wrong here, but he will not listen to anybody who's trying to correct him. And the problem is he's wrong on something that's easy to find. Here you see the citation talking about the Greeks discovering that the Earth was a sphere in the 6th century BC. Aristarchus came along before Eratosthenes, and he was famous for determining the distance to the sun based on the distance between the Earth and the moon. He did this using moon phases. It had absolutely nothing to do with the shape of the Earth. It didn't involve an Earth's shadow. It was the moon phase. Then came Eratosthenes, who was famous for his stick and shadow experiment that determined the circumference of the Earth, the previously known spherical Earth. Now, as noted earlier, there is one problem with Eratosthenes' experiment, and that is that it works fine for two points on the solstice. However, if you add a third point, you run into an issue on a flat earth and the experiment only works on a spherical earth. That is the reason that the sextant was brought out, which is basically a mini Eratosthenes style experiment that is conducted at all latitudes of the earth. 
If you'd like to learn more about sextants and astrolabs, see my video, Phuket Gets Lost Again, and that may help you out some. There's also a spreadsheet showing why a sextant will not work on a flat Earth. Yeah, that's what Aristarchus did. Assumed we were on a sphere based on a light and a shadow in the sky. Okay. So. Aristoteles put sticks in the ground and then assumed uh, based on the sun shadows. The ground. Okay. Based on an assumption of parallel rays from the sun. No, on based sphere. on an assumption that the Earth was a sphere. He based his assumptions on Earth being a sphere to begin with. Did I not just say that? Answer. Yeah, that's our point. That's begging the question, you stupid dick. I asked, I stated that he assumed two things. One was that the light from the sun was parallel because the sun was distant. And the second was that the earth was a sphere. Well, that's useless. That's a begging the question fallacy. So we don't assume our outcome here. That's why I originally asked you for scientific Nathan, evidence. Will you shut up and let me finish? I'm trying yeah, he did finish. He assumed his outcome. He assumed the earth was a sphere. We know. You're finished. You're done. You want to hear how we uh, how we determine the circumference of the Earth or not? Determined? Yes. No, determined. he assumed it. I've already said this. No, he assumed I radius assume. based on the sun's assume, path. Doesn't mean it's I, I've already gone through this, Bob. He assumed it based on a light in the sky. Same as the original assumption that the Earth was a sphere, based on a shadow on a light in the sky. You're wrong on that, Nathan. I'm trying to educate you. The one who demonstrated that this the earth may be spherical spherical was aristotle aristarchus was just the one who thought okay the distance to the earth and the sun and the earth and the moon was based on his observations he was not the one that thought that I the earth that was did. spherical yes you that's total nonsense so when you say the distance between the earth and the sun do you mean the earth is a flat plane or do you mean the earth is a spherical object causing the shadow that he observed because that is precisely what he did. He assumed the shadow was caused by a spherical Earth. He was the first to assume it. That is absolutely correct, newbie. Wrong. He assumed the Earth caused that shadow. The Earth being a spherical ball? You're getting your, you're getting your history mixed up again, Nathan. Now, do you want to learn the correct thing or not? Uh, I don't give a crap about history. The fact is they assume it's a sphere. Who gives a crap? Well, there you have it, folks. Even his own panel is telling him that he's wrong. But does he care? No. He just wants to continue blithering on as he has been doing and stay with his narrative. This is almost embarrassing. But I think that it's very easy to hear that when he is asked if he wants to know the correct answer, he states clearly that he doesn't care. He doesn't care what the history is. He doesn't care about relating the history correctly. He just doesn't care. He just wants to continue on with his narrative. Now, why is that? Does he know that this is incorrect? Honestly, I think he does. But it's so important to his followers that he stick to the narrative and put on this persona of aggressive obtuseness that he needs to continue to do it or he's going to lose the financial support that he gets from his channel. So that's sad. Quite frankly, it's intellectually dishonest and it shows a very low level of integrity and maturity. Now, are you ready to have me show you how they determined the Earth was a sphere or not? Uh, what, like I asked you originally for scientific evidence that the Earth was a sphere? Yeah, I can give you, I can give you multiple. Now, Number one is the problem with Eratosthenes, all right? Now, we just went through this. He begged the question. He assumed his outcome. That is the problem. He has assumed his outcome. We've gone through this, Bob. Moving on. Are you going to listen or not? You stupid dick. All right, well, like I said, call me names all you want. Yeah, you're a dick because you keep repeating the same thing. Then accusing me of talking over you when you continually interrupt as I demolish your religion. Then you do not acknowledge the demolition. And then you repeat it again. Yeah, that's the behavior of a dick. Now, am I going to be able to speak or are you going to talk over me again, Nathan? The problem with Eratosthenes is this. He used one measurement and got a seven degree, seven degree shadow. That works on both a flat earth and a spherical earth. The problem that you run into is when you start getting multiple sites 
doing the same thing. And a classic example of that is using a sextant in Polaris. You can actually measure the distance between degrees of latitude determined by a sextant. And that, my friend, only works on a spherical Earth. It does not work on a flat Earth. Again, that's called an affirming the consequent formal logical fallacy. Nathan, it's a measurement. No, it's now, not. The only You're time not... that a the only time that a sextant works on a flat Earth is at the North Pole, and at forty five degrees north. Every other line of latitude is wrong on a flat Earth. They fit perfectly on a spherical Earth. That's again. So that is another false equivalency and an affirming consequent. So now. It's fun to listen to Nathan talk about all these logical fallacies that he read about in Wiki, but he should at least get them straight. Now, a false equivalence is when you take a single common characteristic between two things and then by virtue of that common characteristic, make them equivalent to each other. For example, Jesus and Hitler both had mustaches, but they are not the same people. Both the flat earth and the globe earth are models of the earth. That's the only thing that they have in common. The globe earth has ample evidence behind it. The flat earth, I've not yet seen even something as basic as a model. Yeah. You look at the horizontal drop and the amount of obstruction due to the curve and calculate a radius of that curve from that. Curve? Oh, that curve. Radius, hold on, hold on. What, what that curve? Radius Sorry, what's the horizon? The Sorry. Circumference of the earth. Again, we need to so clarify all terms. All factors come together. So, we need to clarify terms. What's confirm. the horizon? Spherical what's Earth. the what's the horizon? The horizon is the bulge in the curve of the Earth. Oh, so you're presupposing that the horizon is the bulge of a spherical Earth. Nathan, you can easily measure the amount of obstruction. Yeah. So you are literally going to ignore what I've just pointed out, that you have begged the question, because you have predetermined that the horizon, the arbitrary point where the land meets the sky, is in fact the leading edge of a sphere Earth. You seem to be ignoring yeah, me, Bob. Ignore you, Nathan. Yeah, so you're not a very good debater, are you? So I make a point, you ignore it, straw man me, and then say I'm not a very good debater. No, you, you haven't acknowledged my point. All you do is shout logical fallacies and shout over your guests and call them names. That's not a good debater tactic. That's just a bullying tactic. Not, can I make a It's fine with me. So you want to go ahead and do the curve. Okay, and you say that I presuppose, which is an incorrect term, by the way, that the Earth is a sphere. All right, so we can take a flat Earth and we can demonstrate that on a flat Earth we should see an entire mountain. If we don't see the entire mountain, we can sit down and we can say, well, the only way that that will happen, since there are no obstructions between me and the mountain, is that it has to be a curved surface. And we can calculate R from that curve. We can calculate R. So, so it has to be a curved surface. And then we're going to work out if it's a curved surface based on the fact that it can only be a curved surface. So what you're saying, in effect, is you must presuppose it's a curved surface for you to work out... No, I can start off with a flat surface and predict what I would see on a you flat surface. You think that obstruction may be caused by something else? Like optics? Limited you can, viewing you can angle? Measure and demonstrate that. Limited viewing angle? Diffraction? No, no you, didn't, you didn't measure that, Bob. You liar. So I pointed out that you weren't measuring the drop to give you a circumference that you were actually presupposing that you were looking at the leading edge of a sphere, which is begging the question and assuming your outcome. You then went... Boy, this guy tries my patience. Now, I want to point out the fact here that I said very clearly that I could start off from a flat Earth and I could measure an obstruction. Now, a valid point was brought up. Could things other than curvature, for example, cause that obstruction? Yes, it can. We can measure both. In the case of optical effects, we can see whether or not they're consistent at thousands of sites throughout the world. We, in the case of possible curvature, we can see if that is consistent at thousands of sites throughout the world. If it is consistent, we can calculate a radius of that curve from those observations. Every time I start talking about this, Nathan interrupts me and goes off on his own tangents because he doesn't want to hear it. The problem with Nathan, much as this example of the great circle courses is that he doesn't have enough background in science and geography and basic geometry 
and instead of following the conversation until it bears fruit, he feels the need to interrupt it. This is also a verbal power ploy that he uses to maintain control of the direction of the debate. Well, you asked me what the horizon was, I told you. Then you said, well, that presupposed something else. And then I said, okay, well, here's how you measure that something else. You just don't follow the conversation very well. Man. No, I do. You also ignored Arwin. After that, Arwin asked you if it could be possibly something else. Do you want to reply to that? I already did, but I'll reply again. I said, yes, it could be, and we can measure those and test it. So if it could be something else, how are you going to say that yeah. you're measuring the drop from the leading edge of a sphere if it's possibly not the leading edge of a sphere, Bob? That kind of ruins your logical fallacy, does it not? Well, no, it doesn't, and I'll tell you why. Because so, you think that we determined that the, the Earth is a sphere based on one measurement. No, we don't. We do that's not a measurement. That's not a measurement, Bob. Let's get it clear. You predetermining what the edge that you're going to measure the drop of, that's not measuring the drop. It's presupposing it's the leading edge of a sphere. It's called begging the question. Nathan, you don't know what you're talking about. Like Bob states that there are a thousand measurements, but I would like the first measurement that he had to be more accurate. I hate to kind of take the side of the ball earth, but I don't want someone to debate flat earth and the spherical earth uh with with the bad science bad history uh because if you want to okay. debate it you get, get the best argument put forth All so right. the aristosthenes experiment or observation was based on the high noon at the summer solstice you measure that um assuming that the sun is directly overhead and there's no shadows cast and the other assumption is that the earth is spherical so 360 degrees he goes to another point on the planet and measures the the degree of the sun. Uh, and in, in Alexandria, the it was seven and twelve sixtieth or seven point two degrees south of overhead. Sorry, you've already just explained in that explanation my problem, my issue is contained within your explanation, which is that you assume the Earth's a sphere. Yeah. You then went on to describe it as a planet while you were doing the observation. So you've already decided, presupposed that it's a spherical planet. You don't know what that term means, Nathan. Yeah, I do. You love to use it, but you use it incorrectly. It's kind of a source of amusement to me. Oh, really? Well, just prove R, and then we'll all stop laughing at you. Because as I understand it, every single mathematical proof ever provided ever of a spherical Earth uses the presupposition that you're on a spherical Earth. Presupposition, Nathan, means that you have no evidence for it. All right. <laughs> well Shall done. Shall we continue with the discussion of Eratosthenes that was started by one of your other panel members? Thank now, you. going back to your original observation that Eratosthenes got that seven, seven and a quarter degree um, shadow on the solstice. Now that uh, works on both no the flat earth. There's no do anything other than completely circle joke my audience for possibly the next hour. So I think that's probably the best point for me to round out this show. Hello, Sausage. Have you woken up? And that was that. He just stopped the show in mid-answer. Well, we may have one more episode on this. And then I think I'm probably going to go back on Nathan's show one day for more material. I've already got another trap waiting for him. So this is Bob the Science Guy signing out. And remember, keep it flat. This rabbit hole. Too deep.